our next session is about to begin and it's uh, a session on hyperlocal working together to get people out and engaged in your area. I'm pleased to introduce Minto Snyder, who is the CEO of the Waterloo Regional Tourism Corporation. Maria Fortunato, who has over 18 years working in a variety of destination management organization capacities and is the executive director of the Hamilton Halton Brent Regional Tourism Association. We'd also like to uh, welcome Chuck Thibault, who is the executive director at Central County Tourism. We'd like to welcome Melanie Robert, who is the VP and CMO for Destination Ontario. And finally, we'd like to welcome Dave McLaughlin, who is the Executive Director for, of Destination Northern Ontario. Welcome everybody and thanks for joining us today. The new, the new buzzword or coming out of the pandemic in the summer and in the fall was really hyper-local. And Dave, I know it's challenging for everybody, but uh, you guys are in the north and really rely on that season to get your year in. Can you speak to uh, Northern Ontario's uh, conundrum over the, over the pandemic? And you've got a presentation to share with us on, on what you and your team uh, think hyperlocal is and how you've handled it. David, over to you. Yeah, just, um, just got to move uh, this uh, so I can uh, start this slideshow here. And thank you very much. And, uh, and thank you for the uh, opportunity to, uh, to be here today. Hmm. We're having some problems, I can see. So let's go back. We're all getting technology updates as we go. <laughs> yeah, and I can, David, I can run it for you if you'd like. Okay, sure, that'd be that'd be Just, great. Just uh, exit screen share, and I'll take over. Okay, we'll do that. Yeah, just had a few slides. So, you know, thank you. Thanks, everyone. Uh, you know, great the conversation this morning. Really appreciate uh, being here. Um, you know, hyper-local, you know, can mean different things depending where you are and certainly the north. Um, you know, we have uh, a very large region. We're about 85% of the provincial landmass. And, um, and um, you know, if you're in Kenora, hyper-local might mean uh, Manitoba in the Winnipeg market. Um, you know, uh, you know, two hours to Winnipeg from Kenora, 22 hours from the GTA, you know, moving a little east to Fort Francis, um, you know, four hours from Minneapolis, you know, 20 hours uh, from the GTA, and even where I'm at in Sault Ste. Marie today, um, you know, four hours, I'm in suburban Detroit, six hours, Chicago, um, you know, seven to eight hours from the GTA. So it, for a region that really depends on the U.S. visitor, it's, um, it's really meant some challenges for all of us to, um, you know, to, uh, you know, the, the, to, to the P word pivot and uh, swivel, um, you know, in terms of uh, a domestic and, uh, and of course that hyper uh, local market. Um, you know, we've really worked hard to engage our partners uh, across the, um, across the, uh, the, 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 um, the, the, the region, um, as well as Destination uh, Ontario taking um, into account advice and uh, measures from the government and the uh, and the ministry. That way, we're all kind of singing from the the same uh, uh, the, the same uh, hymn book. Uh, so we are, and um, you know, very much um, you know, checking in with uh, local half health. I think if you arrow down um, a J, you'll get um, uh, some of the print uh, to come up, and uh, we'll just move to the next slide really quickly. We only have five slides here. Um, so, you know, we, you know, obviously we've all had to be inflexible, you know, fully understand the challenges for the festival and event uh, a sector. Um, you know, in the North, our experience has been different once we were able to start opening up last uh, summer. Certainly, um, you know, campgrounds, uh, cottage rental resorts uh, did very well, uh, you know, from the local market. And then later in July, um, you know, the domestic market uh, did start to, to show up. So, you know, um, you know, we, we had a, a real mixed bag in, in terms of uh, what, what happened, but essentially if you were a cottage resort or campground, uh, you did really well. If you were a festival event, meetings, convention, sports, attraction, or a re resource-based tourism sector, that's our lodges, drive in, flying and training, um, you know, face significant uh, uh, challenges. And, you know, um, again, working, uh, you know, Destination Ontario, Melanie, you, you and your team have been fantastic in, in sharing resources and, and helping us out with advice. Um, and, um, you know, can't say enough about the relationship that we have with Destination Ontario. It's all about being ready for when the uh, 
when the time is, is right. And uh, we'll just move on to the next one quickly. And, um, you know, executing. So everyone, uh, of course, Digital Main Street, uh, you know, regards to us uh, with the Northern Portal, as well as our DMO partners, uh, working with them uh, to, uh, to get the message out about what's available locally, including uh, food and, and culinary and everything else really responding to, uh, you know, the current situation, you know, we've been in market, out of market so, so many times now, um, you know, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's just been, uh, we're all on this roller coaster ride um, and uh, we're still going to be on it for, for some time to come. And it's really important that uh, align messaging. So, you know, you know, between us, again, the province, um, our DMO partners, um, you know, that we're, again, we're all putting out the, uh, the, the same message and um, you know right now we're, we're back into uh, you know kind of that dream phase kind of pointing out uh, you know what is available here without strong calls to action. Our main website uh, northernontario.travel um, you know uh, certainly very early on all marketing was paused. Uh, we went into the dream phase and um, and then quickly started to invest more in in our in our own region across the province and then uh, you know, as well as uh, the Manitoba and Quebec markets and we thought we were going to see uh, a real decrease in traffic but to our surprise and if we just uh, you know arrow down again uh, Jay uh, overall um, you know for the first six months of the year our website visits were up 60 percent um, you know referrals to operators uh, up 77 percent. Traffic was up from from within the north, but also from the south at 143 percent, and uh, you know 85 percent of all visits to to our main website um, were from the uh, domestic market, which is a real change for us. Um, you know, again, primarily the U.S. market is is so important to us, and in the first six months. Um, you know, we, we had about 3 million uh, visits to the website and we'll just move on to the next slide. And of course, you know, that brings us to, to where we're at now. So over the course of the summer, again, if you were on Manitoulin Island, accommodators there had the best season that they ever had. Out in Kenora is the only um, district or market for uh, hotels that actually in the country that exceeded last year, uh, both in terms of occupancy, room rate and revenue per available room. Um, and uh, we did have a good season across the board for anyone located on the highways with cottage resorts. But of course, we all know uh, moving forward, um, if we are going to, uh, you know, rescue winter, what's left of winter in the snowmobiling, or, you know, looking forward to summer, we need to get these numbers down. So uh, certainly, um, we are, are sharing the, uh, the provincial messaging around staying home, staying safe. And, uh, and saving lives. And that's just where we're at right now, where we are next week and in the week after. Um, we don't know, but uh, hopefully uh, we, we see things improving and that we really are on the home stretch. And that's it from me, Dave. Thanks very much, Dave. Uh, let's move over to Chuck Thibault from the uh, Central County Tourism. Uh, last year, um, near the end of the month, we were in Richmond Hill gathering together for what seemed to be the last time for a lot of us um, and you know we got to share some of what Central County has to offer you know we had a taste of place and and saw a lot of glimpses of your festivals how have you guys handled this the pandemic and and how has your RTO worked with the festival and event world to to transition to either digital drive-in drive-through Chuck that's a good a good set of questions. Uh, first, I want to I want to I was thrilled to see so many of our municipalities and our festivals up on those up on those first two screens of the award winner. So congratulations to all the winners. That's that's phenomenal. Um, this is we're sort of be talking about hyper local. To me, this is becoming one of those words that I absolutely hate as much as I hate the word pivot. Um, it, it's almost to me it's almost like a resignation a resignation that. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's a way for people to easily say no. And I think that one of the things that we've been trying to do is work with those people who are looking to try to say yes and come up with new ways to do things. Um, you know, as early as, as June of, of last year, in the middle of, of the pandemic, you know, we were talking with people who came up with fantastic solutions for temporary spaces um, that could host a thousand people outdoors in groups of 10 in pods and all these things so that festivals could continue to work. And I, and I, 
I applaud those efforts. And I do think that that's where we need to get to from a festival perspective, uh, create a municipal hub uh, in, in a regional setting that all the different festivals can, can book to, uh, to ensure that their, their festivals can go forward. So we've been working with some people to try to do that and trying to find locations and trying to find people who are uh, excited about saying yes and trying to figure out workarounds to, to uh, invite people to come in a, in a safe manner. And I think that that's something that, that we've, we've been focused on at Central Counties. Uh, we have a partnership fund, of course, um, like most of the regional tourism organizations, and we do uh, partner with a lot of our festivals to uh, to make sure that they are as successful as they can be. So in 20, like last year, a lot of them did have to to change direction, go online, different things, incurred expenses that they didn't uh, didn't expect. So we were able to help them through that. Uh, moving forward, we've got the same thing coming up for the for the upcoming fiscal, um, but we really want to try to find ways to to get the festivals to come back. And I and the reason for that is most of our festivals, regardless of size, have between twenty and thirty percent that are not local people. They are coming from, and they don't consider themselves tourists by any stretch of the imagination. If you're going up to Newmarket from Toronto, you don't think of yourself as a tourist, but when they go up there, they're spending money in that town, right? They go to, they'll do takeout at a restaurant. If, if they're not allowed to eat in the restaurant, they might go in and stop at a shop and we need those funds. And if we are considered hyper local, that means that that festival has to engage 20 or 30% more local people who are not as predisposed to spend additional money in the restaurants and stuff because they can just go home and, and do it. So I think I'll, I'll, I'll stop there to let other people chat. Uh, Chuck, I just have one question for you. Has this, and the hyperlocal, I, I get what you're saying there, but has it given your RTO a chance to sort of step back and reevaluate your storytelling of the area as these different things become available in your region? We, we've always focused on content. We don't own anything as an RTO. All we can do is tell the stories of our stakeholders. So we have we spent all of 2020 uh, reaching out to stakeholders to build new stories and new content. And the great thing about a story is you can tell it to a, a variety of different audiences as we're allowed. So right now we are focused on telling the story within the region to try to drive additional uh, people out. And the great thing about many of these festivals is they're outdoor things. And the one thing that we've found is people want to spend time outdoors. And, and uh, I think there's a, couple of, there's a couple of things that are going to come out of this pandemic, which are, which are good things. And one is the seasonality of travel and people's predisposition to only travel in the summer and, and go outside in the summer has changed. The amount of people that are utilizing the parks and the, and the trail systems in the winter right now and realizing that, hey, it's not so bad. Uh, bodes very well for for this for this industry to to do some new really awesome things in uh, in seasons where they normally wouldn't okay let's uh, jump over to mento mento um can you explain to us the difference between the rto and the dmo and what the role of a dmo in any given area is I thought you were going to give me an easy question. <laughs> That's pretty easy. <laughs> you know, I was going to I was going to jump on on what Chuck said, and I'm sure um, everybody else will agree with me because I saw Dave and Maria nodding. Um, but I, I I think aligning our messages is one of the most important things that we can do. I think the RTOs work differently depending on who where they are in the province and and um, how they the relationships that they have with their DMOs. But we found a great balance working with our RTO in our area. Um, just making sure that we're in alignment with one another. We're not stepping on each other's toes and we're not double uh, doubling up on what we need to do because none of us have unlimited funds, especially now. We have to make sh we have to make sure that we're making the most of our funds by working together. So that's what that's what we've been able to do. And I think that uh, if there's a silver lining to the pandemic, this has maybe been one of them. Um, that it's it's we've become much um, closer with our RTO than we have been in the past. So that's been fantastic. But the other thing. And, and Chuck, I, like you, can't stand that word. And I, I saw in the chat that someone said we should use swivel instead. So 
when we had to change from marketing to outside our region, and we have a pretty big region, we're, we're quite lucky because we have 550,000 people in our region. Our challenge is getting people out in their own region rather than driving to the GTA or to Niagara. We want, and they couldn't go anywhere else anyway. So we were trying to encourage people to get out. But what we think we're doing is building ambassadors so that when people can travel, we've got more people in Waterloo region that are able to call their friends and family in other areas and say, hey, we've got something really cool going on here. You should come down and visit us to see that. And then, Chuck, I don't think people, locals are going to be staying, going home to eat dinner. I think that as soon as they can go out, they're going to be eating in restaurants, whether they're in their own region or, or elsewhere. That's so a valid I, point. <laughs> I agree with you. You know, we can get people from, from Paris, Brantford, you know, even areas close. It, it all helps to spread, the, spread people around. Um, I don't know. You've always been a, a, a big proponent of bringing people together in the Waterloo region, you know, especially your events and the RTOs. And, and I think that's one thing through this process, whether it's the minister's roundtables or whatever, the sector associations, the RTOs and the DMOs seem to be working better together. And if you're on this panel, you've always worked well with festival and events. So uh, <laughs> thank you very much. Um, can you share some of your success stories in Waterloo Region from this past year? Well, we, we struggled to begin with, like I think everybody did. I mean, I, I for one thought that we would be home for two weeks um, starting March 16th. So apparently that wasn't right. Um, but what we wanted to do was try and um, collaborate with local with the local community to encourage people to get out and enjoy the community um, and especially support our our smaller businesses and restaurants because that was one of the only things they could do and very quickly the province responded by allowing uh, temporary patio um, expansions and the LCBO was able to support us as well so we hired artists local artists to paint picnic tables for us. We called it the Art Fresco Campaign. And I will show you a picture of, um, of what that looks like. So if you can, I hope everybody can see that. So what we did was we commissioned local artists. So we were able to communicate with the arts and culture community. Uh, we, we worked with a large venue where we had enough space to socially distance artists. And we worked with Home Hardware, which is local to Waterloo Region, and they helped supply us with paint. Um, and we co commissioned tables, which we ended up distributing to 50 restaurant patios across Waterloo Region. Um, and that was a campaign that, that really resonated in the arts community, as well as with uh, our local restaurants, some of whom we'd never worked with before. We refunded all our membership fees in, um, in 2020 uh, when, when we were able to get some funding from the federal government. So we're working with more partners locally than we ever did before. Uh, Maria, Hamilton's a hub of uh, uh, events and stuff throughout the year, and I know you and your RTO have been big supporters of that. Can you talk about uh, the situation in Hamilton and what you guys have been working on and working through this? Yeah, thank you, Dave. Um, it's My area is more than just Hamilton. It's also Halton and Brant, and we do have an Indigenous uh, community we work with as well, Six Nations of the Grand River Territory and the Sasaga, the Credit First Nation. So um, when the pandemic started, we as our RTO really looked at how we could start to support our area um, within the realities of the day. And we, like uh, Chuck and David and even and Minto have highlighted, we and, and DO, um, are always usually focused on the non-local audiences. So we really had to start looking at how we began to um, work uh, and leverage our local audiences and um, try to support our, our local businesses. Because if we don't have a strong business foundation, then we won't have tourism to draw uh, non-local tourists to and really bolstering the ambassador side of things and uh, look at how um, we also support our events. So what we had did was uh, through direct investments, like we have the partnership fund that you heard about, 
and through our indirect investments, what our core priorities are, we um, evolved and swiveled um, what we were doing. And so um, what we did was provide some direct uh, dollar support to events to help um, uh, go into the virtual platform space. So events such as Sound of Music, Super Crawl, Visit Oakville, that's doing a Taste of Oakville event, that's doing a live stream uh, music concerts, a Winterfest in Hamilton that's going on right now, Noisemaker Productions in the and the County of Brant, they do a live music program and a Canada Day program. So there's just some examples of events that we provided direct support to help bolster their new growth. And then in marketing, we evolved a, a hyper-local. So to us, hyper-local means within a community because we really look at um, what um, you know lockdown looks like, what the local public health units are saying, and what we can do to foster local residents to buy local and putting direct paid media marketing into those local communities to support the locals to go out to restaurants, um, go online through our website, and participate in virtual programs and activities that many of our large uh, attractions have done, participate in the virtually events that are going on and really putting some local marketing tactics has been part of our strategy as well. So we developed a show some local love um, angle to things in the early days, something we could say to the community at large within our region, show some local love, and something that could be adopted by local businesses and our DMO partners that we've been working with closely because we don't exist to duplicate but really about leveraging as mental highlighted you know fi funding and dollars are finite are finite but working together we really put more into the market to support our, our local business economy. So that's our approach that we adopted. And if you go on our website, theheartofontario.com, you really get a sense of that local um, support we're trying to put there, rich content, great offers based on our realities, and um, really about getting our local residents engaged. And then um, certainly we're gonna move along to non-local audiences when the time is right. But we do continue um, our destination appeal element because we don't want to lose our share in the marketplace. It took us a lot of money and a lot of effort to build our presence in the marketplace. So we've got some tactics at play related to that so that we're, once we can, we can quickly get those visitors back and, and um, spending in our area. So that's been our approach. Uh, Melanie Robert, the VP uh, of Destination Ontario and Chief Marketing Officer, it must have been quite the shock that, you know, we're all used to bringing people together, mm -hmm. celebrating building communities. All of a sudden, the job of Destination Ontario is having everybody stay home and stay safe. Can you speak yes. to that transition and how that yes. rolled through the office? Absolutely. Yeah, I know it's a great, you know, as a marketer, you're kind of like, it's right to the heart because you know what you're trying to do and want to do and celebrate the great work and the great product experience we have across the province and you're not able to. It's, it's tough, but I mean, our immediate focus certainly went to our partners in the industry. Um, and we wanted to pivot to use that awful word <laughs> as quickly as we could to help support was we, we couldn't market and bring people to help, you know, I create visitation and incremental expenditure. So we did that a couple of different ways. So of course, you know, we've, we've remained very agile and flexible in any marketing initiatives that we have done. We've worked leaned heavily on our RTO partners and our DMO partners who have great local content and know their local partners and their local region and their local experiences, obviously a lot better than we do. So really amplifying it and, and, and putting dollars behind their content to help tell that story on a geo-fenced regional level so we can help support them and their efforts. Sorry, I am also homeschooling, so sorry if you hear any noise in the background. <laughs> um, so that was one piece of what we did when it was safe to do so aligned with restrictions. Another piece was is that we work close with Destination Canada and our ministry in order to put together a $13 million DCDO program that put funding directly to our RTO partners and sector associations. Because at the end of the day, again, it's going to start from the regional and, and local level first. And we wanted to ensure that if we could help, we want to be able to put the, hand, the money in the hands of the people that are going to do the work first and know their region the best. That was a big piece of what we were doing as well. Um, and then from there, of course, you know, we've, I've had probably 47 <laughs> versions of plans and scenarios and everything else. I'm sure as everyone else in this call has too, to make sure we're as agile and ready to be able to help support when the time is right. Um, you know, it's interesting because 
Of course, like with digital, particularly as everyone knows from a marketing perspective, you can be very finite in your targeting and your planning. Um, but we've learned a lot too. And we've been able to hopefully pass down that knowledge where we have. We've shared research um, insights every every couple of weeks in the beginning and every every month now as they come through with all the different resources that we curate from, whether it's DC, Google, a bunch of different um, resource uh, places that we're able to share down to the RTOs as well, just to help us keep a pulse on really important things that are such strong indicators and proxies for our work. Resident sentiment, that's a huge number we need to keep an eye on. If communities aren't open and welcoming and comfortable having people come into their community, that's gonna really change both the community perspective and experience as well as the traveler's perspective and experience. As well on the flip side, when you look at the data too, I mean, there is a lot of, um, like there's a lot of concern around safety and security and people don't feel comfortable going too far from their region right now, either from a travel perspective. I mean, obviously we're gonna stay at home lockdown order at this time, so that's obviously not appropriate at all. But those two proxies, we've watched those numbers a lot and seen them ebb and flow as things opened up in the summer, you saw more comfort. As things locked down again, you, you, know, you saw a lot more discomfort. And we've learned a lot too, we, as David mentioned, we were working together on an initiative to help encourage some local travel to the north. And we had, um, at the time when it was much more open, we were able to, we were encouraging, you know, a broader pan-northern kind of in, uh, domestic uh, pull to go to the north together. And as soon as those numbers started coming up, we like immediately saw that sentiment change. Like, honestly, every day you can see that, that sentiment and that tweak move. And so being in those spaces and having that insight, we've tried to also use that to help inform and educate ourselves on sort of what does that walking on ice look like and when is the time right? Um, with some of those proxies as indicators for consumer intent. Melanie, I'm going to put you on the spot a little bit uh -oh. here. <laughs> um, you know, at some point we're coming out of this. Yes. And when we come out of this, we're coming out of this together. And, Absolutely. and it's not just the province of Ontario and all of us gathered in this room. It's the whole world. Mm -hmm. And it's going to be a marketing effort like no one's ever seen, I don't think. How, how do you prepare that you're not throwing good money at bad in a hyper marketed world? That's a great question. Um, you know, I, I've thought a lot about that too. I do think it's going to be when the competition comes, it's going to be fierce because you have so much pent up desire to move. And when this, when it's safe, whether it's 21 and 21, 2022, whenever that's going to happen, I think you're right that there's going to be a really, really competitive environment. It's going to take big dollars and, and big brand ideas and big creative and, and, to get attention and get and to get air to get mind share. Um, I think for us as a, as a province, and I know our CEO Lisa Lavecchia talks about this a lot, and so does our minister. Like, Team Ontario is going to be critical to that. So, we need to work together as a collective industry, where and decide where we want to where we want to put our dollars collectively together and in, in partnership models um, because we can't spend our way out of it. We have to be smarter to get to break through in that space, and so. Part of what I've been working on for some time, we had tried to do something just before COVID is we were working on some, some slightly different partnership models and going into markets together as a collective and almost like a marketing ecosystem. Um, and so I've been thinking about that for a while um, since, since I've come into this role. And so we hope to have something meaningful and the ministers talked about that as well too, like a sort of a, a collective marketing strategy for uh, Destination Ontario and, and uh, RTOs and how we can work together, but also a gateway model with some key gateway city partners as well as like going into key us markets so i think it's just about putting our money together making sure we have really strong and, and impactful creative stories telling together making this making the experience and the knowledge and the information and the connection with the consumer as frictionless as possible we need to make sure we're working together to make it as easy as possible to choose us whether the planning content is really driven by search insights and consumer insights making sure we're answering the questions easily to help to make a seamless experience through the user experience for someone that's got a lot of choices on their plate um, so I think it's it's things like that that we're going to have to really collectively cherry pick where we think we can make the most impact together and leverage both our dollars, our knowledge, our storytelling, and our user experience or visitor care models to make that the most impactful we can to have them choose Ontario. Minto, did I see a hand up or were you just scratching? No. Okay, I'm going to move over to David. David, back to you. Um, in the north with your festival and events, are, are they drivers for tourism or, or is it more that your tourists coming into that area have other, other opportunities to do things, whether it's attractions or festivals? How, how does that model work for you up in the north? No, uh, festivals and events are an important part of our uh, tourism landscape, um, you know, um, and um, certainly play uh, a big role in terms of uh, 
you know, residents in Northern Ontario uh, moving around. And of course, you know, anytime you, you travel in the North, it's a commitment. And so, um, you know, many of our festivals and events, you know, involve two to three nights of overnight stay. Um, if you're coming from Sudbury to the Sioux or, you know, going from the Sioux to Thunder Bay. So it is a, it is a big part uh, of our tourism landscape. And, uh, and certainly, um, you know, it, it's been a, a tremendous challenge uh, in, in the last, in, within the last year. And I'm just going to go around the horn here and ask everybody, and we'll start with you, David, since you're on, online with us. Uh, put on your, your uh, or look into your crystal ball, and what do you see 2021 being like? Well, I'm probably the worst person to ask because um, my, my glass is always full. <laughs> so I'm an eternal optimist. Um, you know, I think, you know, um, the North's experience with COVID has been completely different from the South up until recently. Um, so it has been. We've had the lowest infection rates. And, um, you know, that has changed uh, since Christmas, primarily up in the Thunder Bay District, where they've had a lot of problems with uh, uh, work sites, with whether it's mines or, or power dams. But, um, you know, we're seeing the numbers come down, you know, across the province. Um, you know, for us, we, we watch Michigan, um, you know, Minnesota, the Midwest states, and we are seeing those numbers uh, come down substantially there from where they were, you know, a couple months ago. <coughs> I'm hopeful that at some point here, we will have an open border. Um, and that, um, you know, that'll, if we have an open border, you know, whatever it takes, that's kind of problem solved for us. Um, other than that, you know, I think, you know, working with uh, Destination Ontario and all our partners in terms of that, that domestic market, um, we're well poised to have a, a half decent season if we can get out and about. So that's, that's what we're hoping for. And, um, you know, fingers crossed that, uh, that we all do our part to get there. And Chuck, how about you? We haven't heard from you in a bit. So, what what do you think twenty twenty one is going to look like at Central Counties? Well, I think I think that, like David, I like to be an optimist. I think one of the silver linings of of the pandemic is the recognition by the municipalities that the business the businesses of tourism are really important to the vibrancy of a community, both from a local standpoint, a business standpoint, and and a visitor standpoint. Um, so I see that we're going to continue with some great engagement with our municipalities, uh, work towards creating community tourism plans, which really formalizes what tourism success looks like uh, within each municipality. And festivals and events are a huge part of that overall community success, both from a residential and a, and a visitor perspective. Uh, the next step in, in, in my mind is, is making sure the residents understand it. Right, it's it's the it's the biggest conundrum, and and you know, municipal councils run into it all of, all of the time. You have all these great ideas and all these businesses that want you know have come up with safe ways to do things, and then you have a bunch of residents who say no, not my neighbor, not my backyard. Um, but the recognition by the municipalities about the importance of of the tourism businesses on the on the overall economy can then can then transcend down to the residents. And, and if everyone is talking from the same playbook in terms of the importance of it, um, you can actually change some of that public perception and, and make those communities more welcoming. Um, so I think it's a bottom up approach and, and we're here to help those conversations along. I think it'll be a pretty good year. And Minto, I'm going to throw another question at you just before I get your uh, look in the crystal ball. But a, a lot of times DMOs are, are housed under chambers of commerce or municipalities or economic development. And there's a lot of talk about where, where the proper fit or where that should be. And it's a difficult conversation, I know. But from your experience, where, where is the best landing place for that DMO? And that's, a, that's a good question. I mean, I, I think one of the... Uh, interesting things for us is that we actually share office space with with Waterloo Economic Development. But I, I think one of the things that we need municipalities to understand um, and, and, and uh, regional governments in our case is that we are the people, the DMOs and the RTOs are the ones that are selling our destination as a great place to visit. But that also means that we're showing the uh, outside world that we have the cultural fabric of a community that is welcoming for new visitors, but also for people to move businesses here, to move here for a job, so talent retention. Um, and uh, so if, if it weren't for us, people are looking at community, uh, 
prospective um, business owners that are con considering moving or people that are considering moving for a job are looking around thinking that there may not be anything to do. So if you're not, you're not going to move to a community where there is nothing to do. And the DMO's job is to show everyone that there is a lot to do and, uh, and that we've got a vibrant network of festivals, events, restaurants. Maria said earlier, you know, we, we have to make sure that we're keeping those small businesses alive while we're waiting for visitors to be able to start come to support them. So we need our locals to, to support them in order to um, have those small, small business owners make it through until people are able to travel. And 2021 in Waterloo Region, what do you, what do you see on the horizons? Maybe, maybe in the tourism business, we're all optimists. I, I kind of like to think so. Um, I, I'm, you know, I, I think that it's going to be a little while before things are up and running again. I, I agree with Chuck that we need to make sure that public health and our municipalities are telling people it is safe to go out when it is safe to go out. We can't have conflicting messages like we've had really over the last year. People are confused. You know, yes, support local. Oh, no, don't leave your house. Restaurants can be open. Businesses can be open, but you really shouldn't go out. That's not helping anybody. We need to work together to make sure that people feel safe going out and they feel safe welcoming um, visitors to our communities. Having said that, we also have to make sure that we have um, uh, plans, as Melanie said, we've had I don't know how many plans over the last year, but we have to make sure that we're ready to uh, respond to uh, the, the restrictions. So for example, in our community, Bingaman's, Mark Bingaman has done a great job about making sure that he had ways that he could welcome people onto his property and keep them in their own bubbles by opening a, uh, a drive-in. And also by, you know, he also, he already had the, um, the Festival of Lights, or Gift of Lights event that people drive through in their own cars. But he has been talking to other festivals in the area to say, hey, if it's not safe to go out, maybe we can do something in my amphitheater property where people can stay in their cars. So if there are still restrictions, your festival can still go ahead. So I think we just have to be ready. Thanks, Minto. Uh, Maria, over to you. Um, you know, I would have, if I had heard myself saying this last year, I would have banged my head on the wall some more. But, um, you know, I think if we can return to a summer like we had last year, with what we're going through right now, that that would be a win, gradually getting back to what a normal might look like late summer, early fall. What do you think in, in the Hamilton region and, and the areas that you cover? Um, I, I, I would be in agreement. I think that is likely where we will evolve. Like a lot of it is still going to be about local tourism and then from there evolving to more domestic. Um, I don't, I don't really see, I mean, all the research that I go through and things that I read with and colleagues that are on the panel today and beyond, like, um, we don't think that international will really be, um, dominate this year in 2021. However, what is really good at, that is happening is there are what we call our sales opportunities underway. So we are going to start to sell our Ontario and sell Canada for next year and beyond. So at least we can look at building visitation for the future, which I think is, is really important. Um, and, uh, and I do think um, the other element is, as we're tracking consumer behavior, is also the consumer confidence that we need to um, put into our messages that it is safe for people to go to our um, businesses and that we, I know, are supporting our local businesses be safe as well. So I know between all of us, we're also investing in PPE initiatives and uh, creating new offers and um, helping with infrastructure, well, to some degree infrastructure. We, we have sort of certain things we can't provide funding to, but it's all being done holistically and nimble and being as responsive as possible. And I'm very hopeful um, that we're going to have a really healthy summer locally and encouraging people to travel um, within our province and then beyond, I hope, sooner than later within Canada. I, I, I foresee that. And Melanie, over to you to wrap it up for us. Um, you know, we, we, we all hope to get back to whatever the normal is and, and get back gathering groups uh, and celebrating our festivals and events. Um, you've done a lot of research in your, in your department and the ministry's done a lot of research 
that's telling us that's one thing, but you know, that, that people may not be ready as quickly as we are to get back out and gather in groups and stuff. And how, how are you guys dealing with that? And what are you, is that trend changing at all as we get further into the pandemic? Good question. Um, yeah, I mean, I can share with you, Jess, I just grabbed the latest data just to have you ready for today, just to give you a sense of sort of where that's tracking. And I, I will say I've seen the data tracking from a consumer perspective, both on resident sentiment, as well as on um, like comfort and security and, and travel and intent to travel has really, it really does move as with what's in the dynamic situation that we're in, like when case loads are lower and you know vaccine information is like was positive you start seeing a lot more confidence and a lot like things start to track up and then as soon as things are not great i mean it's obvious like it makes sense it's, it's human nature but really from a 2021 perspective i i would definitely echo everyone on the panel i mean the data is really showing um you know for right now is you know the latest poll on um sentiment from residents uh, from january 19th you know basically you know 34 percent of ontarians would welcome visitors from nearby communities as the highest level, which means, you know, you've got almost 60% of people that wouldn't welcome people from even nearby communities. And as low as like the sentiment around welcoming US visitors or other international jurisdictions is down at 7%. So you have 93% of Ontarians as of January 19th that don't feel comfortable having people from other region, other countries coming in. So that gives you a really good swath of sort of where people are at, but it's, you know, it definitely does position the opportunity for what hyper local as a starting point there is propensity and i think interest in that the same thing you know from a safety perspective 67 percent of ontarians feel safe when thinking about traveling to new bar communities so again that's what it really i think puts some support for that hyper local push as the first step out of this as it starts to hopefully be safer for people to travel versus 11 percent of ontarians perceive safety around going to the u.s or international destinations. so like you really the data is very consistent and you really can see comfort level both from residents as well as from travelers of like sticking close to home and keeping the people that are near you close to home. Um, and I hopefully that will continue. You'll see that that data change. I think the vaccine rollout obviously and vaccination is going to have a massive impact on that. I'm sure everyone feels the same way. I think there's just security and comfort in that. Um, but that being said, like if I could just maybe pivot that a little bit. I mean, I think that there's some really interesting trends that we need to think about as marketers about where it's going to go, which I think certainly has an impact for festival and events too. But, you know, I think, you know, with what we've gone through and Chuck, I was very eloquent about this is I think Ontarians, and I think our locals, we're falling back in love with our with our province and our place. I think the truth is, is that, you know, we've all, you know, keen, you can fly to, you know, Korea for 500 bucks or whatever. We've been so busy and traveling. And there's been so many choices and everything's been so available to people to whip around and do different things. And when it's taken away, all of a sudden you really start to rediscover what you have in the province. And I think there's a lot of human truth in that. And I think that's something that as, as a collective team that, that we need to tap into. I also think the social isolation that we've gone through as, you know, I think the visiting friends and family, while I know it's never usually a big push for us from a incremental visitation and dollar perspective, but I think there's a, there's a human truth in that. That's going to be, check. Sorry, <laughs> there's a human truth in that that I think that also we need to tap into. I mean, I think the truth is, is as what Mincha was saying, you know, I have my, my in-laws live in Waterloo, like, like retail language and opportunities when things are safe to do so about things you can do with family when people come up to visit you. Like there's a lot in that space that I think we can tap into to rediscover and tap into the emotional connection. People are going to be so hungry to hug their in-laws or their mom or their dad or their cousin. Like that's that emotional connection is going to mean so much to the place and how you experience your time together with your family again. And I think we just can't underestimate what slow travel is going to mean in a future state, both domestically and from abroad as well. I mean, I think people have really tapped into the impact on the environment. I think sustainability is going to continue to be a major issue. Traveling by car versus by plane, understanding what trains can do, walking tours, you know, like biking and trips and things. Like, I think all of that is going to, you know, and the love of the outdoors and re-engaging with the outdoors in a four-season destination, as Chuck also said, um, it's blocking out the door. <laughs> but I think there's some really interesting trends there that um, we can tap into. And I have one last thing I'll say is working holidays will be interesting. If people work differently in a future state, what's the opportunity for this province and for to, people to feel like a local and experience life like a local um, and working in other places for longer stints? Nice. Well, thank you very much, thing. everybody. It's certainly a conversation that could go on all day. So David, Melanie, um, Minto, Maria, and Chuck, thank you very much for your perspectives. We really uh, are thankful. Uh, apparently, we had a little video glitch on our main platform, um, and it went down for a bit. 
our session continued to go on and we were recording it. So anybody that rejoined and wants to rewatch it, it should be up on our site in the next 24 to 48 hours in its entirety. So you can jump back in and, and have a look. Uh, we'd also like to remind you that uh, our summit uh, continues on Tuesday, February 9th at 11 a.m. when we're gonna discuss the new realities and future of festivals and events. Uh, and we're gonna be joined by Charlie Johnston, the CEO at the Royal Winter Fair. Uh, once again, Festival and Events Ontario would like to thank the following sponsors for their support of the FIO Summit in 2021, the Ministry of Heritage, Sport, Tourism and Cultural Industries, Destination Ontario, SmartServe, OLG, Event Hub and Ticket Pro. Without their support, our summit would not be possible. Thank you everybody, enjoy your weekend and we look forward to seeing you next week when the FIO Summit continues.